bless God. Right now, I'd like to start reading at Exodus 21, verse 14. But if a man come presumptuously upon his neighbor to slay him with guile, thou shalt take him from my altar, that he may die. I brought this verse up in the prior video that in the case that you were in this spot to presumptuously slay your neighbor, you would be taken from the altar in Israel. In a figure, what this means is that you're taken from the presence of God and his place in heaven. And the importance of this is that in speaking right now about the victory we have in Christ, we are conquerors, we are overcomers, but it doesn't mean that it's determinant, okay? It means that we have it right now. But what happens if we go back to sin, okay? And what happens if we go back to the world, okay? We see different places where the devil is spoken of as being judged before he is judged, okay? We have different places that speak of, for example, the Son of God saying it is finished. What well, was finished, okay? But he is also the author and finisher of our faith. What happens if we turn to disbelief, unbelief, unfaithfulness? For the Spirit speaks expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith. Is Jesus Christ finishing? Well, not in you. Not in you if you depart from the faith, you know. He finishes for those that don't go back to the flesh. Okay. And those that want the flesh, it's the works of the flesh as we've been through. One such reason why is because you're carnal. And you're following not the way of the Spirit. So you can't expect the resurrection of the just. And these are different things that I'd like to talk about. We see that God has given us the victory, okay, and we're conquerors through him that loved us, you know, in Romans 8, but do you love Jesus? Because that's part of the chain there in Romans 8, if you're in the love of God. If you're in sin, you're in the hate of God, so you have Romans 8 separated from you and all the promises are now separate because God makes these other promises of damnation to sinners and backsliders okay since God is working in conditions he can remove you okay just like he taught in Torah you know that person shall be taken from my altar okay paraphrasing so Allow me to start at Acts 26. Okay. And Acts 26, verse 18. To open their eyes and to turn them from darkness to light, from the power of Satan unto God, that they may receive forgiveness of sins and inheritance among them which are sanctified by faith that is in me. So you'd have to really deplete and to make sanctification almost obsolete in any sort of practice. Once we get into other scriptures, if you think this is a one and done verse, Meaning, can you be of Satan ever again? Okay, so you're taken from the power of Satan onto God. Okay, for the forgiveness of sins, which is the blood. Okay, so you're not 
possessed with any sort of devils, like a lying spirit or witchcrafts or all these different things. All those things have been taken away by the Son of God, swept, garnished, okay, empty. Okay, this is what the Son taught. So you don't have that. You don't have any covenant with death and agreement with hell, like it's in the prophet. Okay, although, you know, the application of Isaiah 28 fits the same way with anyone who's backslidden. That's how you leave the new covenant is spiritual death. You know, the New Testament applies to a spiritual covenant. If you spiritually die, you're separate from the covenant. Okay? And now you're at covenant with death. That's where you're given your allegiance to, is sin and death and the devil. Okay? And... That means you have to enter into the kingdom of darkness. Okay? So when Paul teaches about being translated into the kingdom of his dear son, okay, and then you're taken away from Christ, you're cut off from Christ, you're not there anymore. Okay? So you're back over the devil and under the devil. Okay? You're technically not over the devil, so... Excuse me, but you're under the devil's dominion again. Okay. So, we see this with the Passover. Although God had called his son out of Egypt, he gave them a specific in the Passover with the blood that they would do it. And then their firstborn would be secure and safe and that they were going to leave Egypt now we see Paul use this in the church, and the importance of this is that the church is the body of Christ. But then Paul talks about these disobedient in the church, that they'd be given over to Satan, so they might be saved in spirit. Okay? So, why would Paul give someone over to Satan if they're still in the light? You know, this is the message that Jesus gave Paul that you would open their eyes to turn them from darkness to light. Okay. Well, and, you know, they out of the power of Satan, you say, and, you know, they're into the power of God. Then what right does Paul have to give them over to Satan? Okay. And you could say, you know, well, they're never saved, you know, to begin with. And these different things. Well, you definitely can't say that about Demas, you know, because Paul spoke well of Demas in such a way that he spoke well of those in the Book of Life. And Paul had access to the Spirit of God in this, okay, to know that these names are in the Book of Life, and they're also his fellow laborers, okay. But then what happened to Demas is that he forsook Paul, and he loved this world, okay, in that. Now, we have overcome the world because we're in Jesus who has overcome the world. Okay? By faith, we overcome this world. So when you go back to loving the world, you don't possibly think you're still overcoming the world. And you might say, well, no, I'm not overcoming the world, but I'll still be saved. Well, no, you can't be saved if you're of the world. Because the world passes away, and the lust thereof. Okay? It's like the weak brother perishes for whom Christ died. Okay? So, you know, he had victory, but, you know, he gets weak, and then he perishes. But Christ died for him. So what happens? You can be in a perished state, according to that context, and still go to heaven? Well, of course not. But then what else when it comes to atonement doctrines? If the atonement's limited, and you say he was never saved to begin with, Christ died for someone that was never saved to begin with and perished. So the atonement cannot be limited. And you find these problems throughout the scriptures. I mean, when you deal with a faulty atonement view, you know, you get into 1 Corinthians 11, Paul speaking about the body and blood of the Lord, 
is just talking about the atonement, but they're doing it unworthingly. And they're eating and drinking damnation upon their soul. Okay? So they don't have victory. Even though they did, they don't have victory anymore. So to be victorious in Christ, you have to remain such. Okay? And again, I brought this up before that Jesus speaks about, you know, those that overcome. You know, he didn't say you have overcame. That's good enough. No, he said, you know, you have to overcome. Okay. Even to Sardis, who was in damnable sin, they're spiritually dead. They're just awaiting the death of the soul, which I believe they had victory over before. And I'm going to start to talk about that. You know, Jesus said, well, whatever remains, you need to strengthen. Okay. And, you know, they had something. You know, but they didn't have spiritual life anymore, obviously. Okay. But they were told to strengthen that which remains. Okay. He didn't find their works perfect before God, which means they went back to sin. Remember, therefore, how thou has received and heard, and hold fast and repent. Okay. Previous verse. Be watchful and strengthen the things which remain that are ready to die. For I have not found thy works perfect before God. So the admonition to the backslider is to strengthen. Okay. Is to repent. Okay. You have to become victorious again. Okay. You have to have strength. Okay. And you have to be worthy. I mean, Revelation 3, 1 through 6 is very difficult to talk yourself out of that. I think most of the time people just ignore it because they know what are we really going to say. Okay. I mean, it's to the church. Okay. But he that overcomes. Okay. So, yes, you can be taken from the power of the devil to the power of God. You can be translated into heaven, seated in heavenly places even. And you can be a conqueror today in the love of God. You can be free from all sin. You can have the atonement, have it received, okay? You can have all those things. But then when you go back to sin, we see these warnings that you're given over to Satan. So you might be saved, your spirit. Your eating and drinking unworthingly, and this to your damnation. You have things that you're supposed to strengthen because they're ready to die. Okay. And you're taken from the altar. Okay. That's not good. Okay. Now, if I go over to 1 Corinthians 15, I'll start reading at verse 54. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is your victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Okay. So, Paul ends the chapter with, being unmovable. You have to be unmovable entirely. So you have to stand. Okay? You have to stand fast, you know. If you're in sin, you're movable. Okay? If you don't have perfect works, you know, the eyes of Jesus are against you. Okay? So... 
a last part of a substitutionary atonement I could maybe get here, you know, in the fact that Jesus actually did go down to Hades, which it was not the torment side. He did go to the comfort side, okay? But we don't have to go there. When he went up to the Father and ascended up on high, he took the saints that had died in faith prior to the presence of the Father. And this we see in Revelation 5. So you've been translated to that spiritually, and if you die today, you will be present with the Lord. Okay? absent from the body, and you'll be in the state that they are in in Revelation 5, worshiping the Father and the Son. Now, in the throne, okay? Now, those of us that know the Scriptures know, if you end up back in Hades, after being saved, while you're breathing, of course, there's no purgatory or anything like that, but now if you die and you go to Hades, you know, you're not going to be in the comfort side. You know, you're going to obviously be in the torment side because that's the only option in Hades right now because if you die in faith, you go with the Lord, okay? And that goes to the veil and different aspects like this. And the point is the Father, to get in the Father's presence, you have to go through the Son of God, okay? So there's victory from that. Okay, and in Paul also talking about the resurrection of the just, not just the resurrection in general, because many will be raised to damnation. So this comes with the kingdom, and I think you know you have a balance there with Hosea 13. But the point is, we all know that men who were right with God ended up in hell fire, like Judas, okay, and King Saul, okay. So they effectively, you know, are no different than those in the church that are warned, you know, if they don't repent, that you end up going to hell and you're previously in the church. Okay? So you don't have victory, okay, anymore. You know, you're going to be swallowed up into hell fire. So Jesus, he actually went to Hades and other men went to the good part of Hades like Abraham and Lazarus. But we never have to go there. Which again, it was a comfort side. They could worship God there. They were not in the presence of God. So we needed him to, you could call it a forerunner. You could say, you know took our place in that if you want. It's not one of the more, you know, I guess how I word this, you know, it's important, obviously. I mean, it's the work of God that he most certainly became a man. And there's scriptures in the Old Testament about men going to the grave, which is Hades. And, you know, obviously they knew there must be a way back to the Father, though. And those that had faith, you know, believed in the Psalms. You know, you will not leave my soul in hell. And, you know, leading captivity captive. And the resurrection and things like this. So there was a way back to the Father. And there is. However, when you get off the path, you know, Jesus... He is not taking your place. You know, you have to go there in that sense. So you lose the substitution because you end up in a place that you weren't supposed to go. You know, you've made a covenant with death. Okay. And you're at agreement with hell. All right. So the victorious aspects of the atonement just fall into place with sin. Once you conquer sin, you're in a victorious state in Jesus. You know, you have the blood and you have the free gift. 
you have the grace of God. And you have perfect works. I mean, you have what Jesus is looking for. You might say, well, I haven't done a lot of works. I just got saved. Well, you just confess that you got saved. That's a good work, you know, and confession is on to salvation. And, you know, you, the few that you've done, you're in Jesus doing these things, you know. You're always abounding in the work of the Lord and you're moving forward. And you're looking ahead, you know. You look unto Jesus, the author and finisher of your faith. But, you know, if you go back to the flesh, like Paul said to the Galatians, you know, what were you made perfect by? The spirit, you know, or the works of the law? You know, and I'll go to that right now. But God does remember your sins. You know, it, he talks about this in Jeremiah 14. You know, I will now remember their sins. You know, and then the prophet Hosea, I will love them no more. For there I hated them. Their wickedness is there. Okay. You know, he loved them before, but their present wickedness, God changed his mind. So they didn't have any sort of reconciliation. You know, they had immoral influence, you know, to destruction. And they got led away by the devil. So I think we keep seeing aspects of the atonement, how there's different ones, you know, and you have to allow them to harmonize because they all go together, okay? And then you have these false atonement views. We know why they're set up, okay? But here it says, Galatians 3, verse 2. This only what I learn of you. Receive you the Spirit by the works of the law, or by the hearing of faith. Are you so foolish, having begun in the Spirit? Are you now made perfect by the flesh? So when I was paraphrasing, I may have presented it a little bit different. But the idea is, you cannot be made perfect by the flesh. You have to put on the incorruptible. Okay, so there's something about this life, this world, okay, that, yeah, you must be using your flesh correctly, okay, as it talks about in Romans 12. But there is a negative sense, no doubt, to the word. We typically only hear about the negative influence. And that's the problem of the person delivering the false gospel. They don't ever talk about the positives. They don't talk about the neutrals. But you can't go back to the world. You can't go back to taking the temptations of the devil. And you have to realize that it's a temporary time. It's a vain life. Okay? God hasn't put the emphasis on this world. And he hasn't put the emphasis on this flesh anymore. He's gone to the resurrection. Okay? However, you know... This earth isn't just going to disappear. So you must go somewhere, okay, which is hell, okay. The flesh just doesn't disappear. You have to be raised from the dead one way or the other, okay. So you can follow God and have victory, okay, and reign on this earth with Christ in the resurrection of the just. And, you know, there's the thrones of David, as it says in the Psalms, and you can have victory, Okay, and you can abide in it and you can be a conqueror today and nothing can separate you from the love of God if you're in the love of God. And these are all true. However, things that God does, you know, they'll be forever. Okay, so you're of the world. Okay, so for God to have his kingdom for his son set up here, he's got to get rid of the sinners. Okay, and... You know, all the sinners of his people shall die by the sword. You know, so if you want to backslide, you're going to die by the sword. Okay? And he says he'll fight against you with the sword of his mouth even. He said that. Okay? So that's not victory. That's a losing fight. Okay? That's a loss. So victory is true, but you can't just believe only parts of what the Son of God says. We know he was victorious. But now is he calling you to it? Okay? Must you be worthy of him? Must you use the grace of God correctly? Okay? Must you be perfect before him? 
and these answers are, of course, yes. I mean, if you don't follow what he said, you're not going to make it, okay? Yes, the atonement is the atonement, but his words are spirit and life, okay? With what he taught, he dismantled all these false atonement doctrines. You know, he just dismantled some of these things, of course, he said before entering the body. And, you know, he gives the words that the Father gives him. And the Holy Spirit speaks what he hears, okay? Jesus is speaking to the churches, and he says, hear what the Spirit says to the churches, okay? So, yeah, I would just go back to a simple way. Faith overcomes this world, and you read just 1 John 5, 1 through 4, straight up, and whatever is not faith is sin, okay? So if you want to live a defeated life, you will perish in hell, okay? And, you know, another way you could just look at it is that Jesus will judge righteously, you know. And if you're not going to, you know, go by what he says for you to do in life, he will have to judge you for it. I mean, he has to be fair about it. You know, I understand people want easy salvation and they want easy atonement. They want all these things easy in life and you know at the end of the day a lot of these people have never been saved but the backsliders know they know they know that they left god they know that they're not reconciled to god okay so they know it's not an easy salvation they left salvation okay they left being a conqueror they left being an overcomer they're like demas demas knew he loved the world when he did it Okay, you're not going to be out there laboring with Paul, being spoke of by the Holy Spirit in Paul, of your status in the church, and then go back to the world based on what the Holy Spirit is saying about you. Demas knew, you know, he knew what he was. He was shipwrecked. And so, yeah, bless God.